Now let's finish with something new. Well, not new, very, very old. Several discoveries across the country are taking place as we speak. Some findings over 2,000 years old. To find out more and dig in a little, we're joined by history and archaeology expert Anat Harel. Hello, good evening. Hello, hello, good evening. So let's start with this uh, water carrier that was found. Um, what can you tell us about it? How did it work and what is so special about it? Well, one of the most fascinating things that people must know uh, when they come and visit Israel is that this is an arid land, which means that water is precious. Sometimes it rains too much, but most of the times it doesn't rain enough. And so one of the most important things that ancient people needed to do was to find ways to bring water to the cities. And the cities were always placed in high places in ancient times. Jerusalem was placed on top of a mountain, all right? And on top of the mountain, sitting on limestone rock, you can't find water. It's, you cannot dig in. You cannot dig a well to find water. So you have to bring water to the city, and it has to go upwards, right? Well, water does not flow up. It flows down. So one of the things that ancient people needed to figure out how to do is to bring water up to the top of the city. Now, we have already discovered uh, many aqueducts and springs that brought water to the ancient city of Jerusalem. And the one that was just discovered is another section of a long aqueduct about 13 miles long that brought water from the Bethlehem Hills, a little bit south of Bethlehem, all the way to Jerusalem, up to the Temple Mount. But we're talking about 2,100 years ago during the Hasmonean period. And that was really developed and um, sophisticated technology for over 2,000 years ago. That's what's interesting about it. We found another section of the water carrier to the ancient Temple of God and to the ancient city of Jerusalem. Wow, a truly incredible uh, water plant that really is impressive even by today's standards. And they used it yes. up to until the, the British mandate, right? Yes. And so this, so there were two aqueducts. One is called the upper aqueduct and one was the lower aqueduct. aqueduct. The upper one disappeared a long time ago. It was used for about 400, 500 years and it sort of disintegrated. The lower one was so well built and so well maintained that up until the British arrived around 1917, 1920, and there was run and, and they provided running water, up until then, this particular aqueduct was in use for over 2,000 years to bring water to the upper parts of Jerusalem, only until about 100 years ago. Yes, and that is quite amazing. Amazing. And another fascinating story, writing from 1800 years ago reveals a very interesting story of a person who converted. What can you tell us about that? Yes. So uh, a new inscription was found in Beit She'arim, very close to where I live here in the Lower Galilee. Beit She'arim is a necropolis. It's a cemetery, one of the largest cemeteries that we've ever discovered from about 18, 1900 years ago where some very famous Jewish leaders of the Jewish community of the Galilee and the, Jew, the world's Jewish community live, uh, sorry, were buried. They didn't live there. They were buried there. And what we've done, and, and these are burial caves. And so at that time, at that period of time, if you had any money, you didn't just bury yourself in the ground. The burial was in a burial cave. So they excavated a cave. They put you in the cave closed up the door and waited one year until they came back and they took you out on the day on the anniversary of your death and by then it was all bones and they took put you in a box of bones and took you home what we've now discovered uh, we keep discovering new burial caves polka dotting the hill it's on a hill and so every once in a while we discovered another burial cave and another burial cave this burial cave was discovered with some new interesting things a big inscription written in red, red paint, red ink, saying, this is Jacob the stranger or Jacob the convert. It's not exactly sure what it is. Do not come close to my burial cave for you're going to pay for it. Wow. Right? And um, yeah, and they and many times grave robbers used to break into graves and steal things. And so Jacob wanted to make sure 
that nobody came into his burial cave. So he put a big warning, you know, warning, don't come in near my cave. Wow, amazing. What a crazy story. And you have yep. such a fascinating job. Archaeologist Anata Rel, thank you so much for this interview. Thank you very much. ILTV Plus, your news from Israel and more 24-7. Start your free trial today. Subscribe at ILTV.TV and watch from any device.